This is a special announcement from the Pope on Film. An open message to the 45th President of the United States, Mr. Donald J. Trump. Well, buddy, it's official. Despite protests and riots and screams yes. and tears and good-natured common fucking sense, Donald J. Trump, Donald Janice Trump, <laughs> is now the president of the divided states of America. We are the DSA. We are not the USA. We are no longer the USA. We are the DSA. We have been downgraded to a, a failing democracy. Yeah. Flawed, flawed. We've been downgraded so much, I'm pretty sure that we can't rent a car anymore, too. Not without, like, like your mom... Like yeah, something like that. Your mom would have to be there and show yeah, her pretty, identification too. To... Yeah, we can't be, we can't be a country w unless we get another country to co-sign for co us. Co-sign, yes. yes. <laughs> so, um, so we would have to, we would have to get to France and be like France. You know, we're so sorry about that whole freedom fries thing, but we really need to rent this car, and it'd be like, yeah. <laughs> No, fuck you. <laughs> no, I will not be doing that for we you. We were right about Iraq. Remember that shit. <laughs> yeah. So Donald Trump is pre president. Yes, that fat, slimy, anthropomorphic gallstone. Like if you got if you got SpongeBob, and you and but SpongeBob was a gallstone. It would be <laughs> Donald Trump. That fucking boil. That badly written caricature of everyone's racist uncle. Immigrants. <laughs> I'm, thinking like, I'm thinking like Drunk Uncle, the character from SNL, except people take him seriously about foreign and domestic issues. Yes. That Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey's cunt bag. I, I, I used to go to Ring Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus when I was a little kid. Yes. And so like I, I, that was the big deal. Uh, the Clyde Beatty show used to used to roll through my town, so yeah. I went to that a couple of times. Yeah, it was a it was a big deal for Ringling Brothers to come by, so I'm a little bit sad that they're closing down. Yeah. That orange Dementor, like a Dementor from Harry Potter, yeah, except orange and in a suit, and his skin looks like shit. That Bizarro Obama. Like, literally, the actual opposite of Obama. Like, bizarre <laughs> Superman. Trump is bizarro Obama. That convincing John from Fraggle Rock motherfucker. Yeah. That, because convincing John could convince anyone to do anything just by singing a song. And that's basically a description of election 2016. Mm -hmm. That, I'm going to go sell Springfield a monorail system. Son of a bitch. That Hunter S. Thompson acid nightmare. I feel bad saying this, but I'm kind of happy Hunter S. Thompson is dead. Yeah. Because I wouldn't want him to be alive for this. Like, he was so upset when George W. Bush was president. It's like, yes, yes, sure. For all you know, that's the worst president we're ever going to have. Sure. <laughs> Just go to sleep, and we'll deal with the rest of this. Uh, but he, but I think he would be fun to have around. Oh yeah, no, yeah, he, he would be. Would. He, I, I hear your point. It's very, it's very compassionate. But if Hunter S. Thompson was around right now, good God, what reporting we would get. Yeah. Oh God damn it! He would be in his fucking element. Yeah, we need, we need, we desperately need to bring back. 1980s George Carlin. Oh, good lord! Yes, both of them. Like not both of them. It would be like it would be like their whole life yeah, led up not, to this fucking point. Yeah, <laughs> not these George Carlin, and not necessarily 90s George Carlin. We need like 80s, maybe a little bit of 90s George Carlin, is what yeah. we need right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That living, breathing Game of Thrones bad guy. That Muslim-hating ass jacket. That unrepenting rape machine. Preach it, brother. This president has set the record for the most rape cases that he's 
uh, paid out of existence. Yes. Yeah, he has a record now. We're going to be talking a little bit later about other presidential records that are being set. I came up with some good ones, and I can't wait to talk about them. And then, of course, we're going to be talking about Corbin Burnson, but that's later. That classless schmuck. Like, like schmuck. That's a, that's a word. That's a powerful word. But it's a difficult one to, uh, to define. But schmuck. That's Donald Trump right there. He is a no, schmuck. no. It's it's literally your penis in Yiddish. Mm. Yeah, but it both but schmuck just, and putz. Yeah, but to describe a person as a schmuck, how how would how would a person be a schmuck? Just Donald Trump. Just a picture of Donald Trump's yes. face in the Yiddish dictionary, in the Yiddishary. <laughs> That homophobic, xenophobic, xenophobic, Kevin Sorbophobic, son of a bastard whore. That Muppet reject, like a Muppet bad guy, like a bad guy in a Muppet movie, but not like a good Muppet movie, like Muppets from Space or something. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That chainsaw sculpture of a Goodfellas character. That <laughs> joke loving dick cheese that limped dicked ass face that sit in marty croft mustache twirling villain that, that cheeto skinned nutsack that limp dicked con man that fucking twitter troll get off of twitter everyone agrees with you everyone <laughs> agrees with me on this get the fuck off of twitter what the fuck are you doing you're the goddamn president you piece of shit Get the fuck off of Twitter. It's just pissed off. But I am happy that he is doing that. He's president now because I can't imagine what he would do it, it, with the presidency it, earlier. Like if he had like like how would he be doing Twitter stuff if he was president earlier and Twitter didn't exist? He would just yes. be on. Oh, just wait until just wait to see what I have to say about Muslims on uh, Friendster. I, I, I would, oh, 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 well, I'm going a bit back further. I think he would communicate directly with the National Enquirer. Yes, yes, National Enquirer. I had a half-page article in the National Enquirer. They did an interview with me about my church. And really? I believe in that interview... I talked about my dream, like in 1988 or 1998 or 1999, about one day doing a Plan 9 from Outer Space remake. Mm -hmm. I'll cover on that later. <laughs> that lying sack of Armani scented shit, that golden shower loving Wolf of Wall Street cosplay enthusiast, that trope of the rich guy in every 80s movie. Our first order of business, our first order of business as president. My first order of business, shutting down the rec center. I'm going to build a giant high rise there. And my first executive order is making sure no break dancing teens try and save the rec center. Mm -hmm. And also killing all the Muslims. But primarily, the rec center thing is the, primar the primary thing that I'm trying to do here. Mm -hmm. That triple chinned clit. That WWE Hall of Fame snake oil salesman. The Pope on film will be back after these commercial messages. Hello, this is Donald Trump for Trump Steaks. Eat <laughs> of these delicious, high-quality cuts of steak have been lovingly coated in my thick New Jersey jizz so you know it's good. We now return to our angry rant already in progress. That fat fucking bastard! That pussy-grabbing pervert! That incompetent shit-stain! That reality show reject! That patchouli-drenched, cheap, non-tax-paying racist loser! Loser! That dumb white people conning piece of shit in a men's warehouse suit! Tienes <laughs> caca, Trump! Tienes caca, Trump! Trump! Tienes caca! That crooked, ignorant, angry little man, baby. Wah, SNL's making fun of me. They've done that for every president since Gerald Ford. Grow some balls, man. Jesus fucking Christ. 
You goddamn little wrinkly, balding, sad, cheap, racist, sad, sad little fucking man. I bet you love black licorice, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Fuck you, 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 times a hundred plus one, you bastard. So to make a long story short, mm-hmm. we here at the <laughs> film welcome our new POTUS with open arms. Congratulations, Mr. President. You managed to lose the popular vote by almost three million votes and yet still be elected president. How do you even do that? How do you lose an election and still win? Like, really, Mr. President, I want to know. How do you win by losing? Because that's what you are, Mr. President. You're a loser. (laughs) And I feel that everything that you do in your entire life, everything, is just to prove that you're not a loser. Like, like when you were, like, five, Mm -hmm. somebody at school pushed you into the mud and said, you'll always be a loser, Donald Trump. And then he, you just stood up and said, I will spend the rest of my life destroying America, trying to prove you wrong, Billy. Oh. And you know, we, we have a hell of a script coming together. That's just what he decided to spend the rest of his life doing. Yeah. Like there was some bully, like in third grade, and it's like, hey, Donald Trump, Check out my girlfriend. You'll never have a girlfriend as attractive as this. And he just went, I'm going to spend the rest of my life and millions of dollars proving you wrong, Billy Sullivan. <laughs> and I was just track this Billy. We just need to track this Billy Sullivan who hurt Trump when he was a little fragile kid. But I feel that the worst thing the worst thing that we can call Donald Trump is a loser. Like, like I imagine that like it may be the reason why he always tries to win and be the best and be grandiose is probably, probably because of some drunken father in a belt. Yes. That somewhere in his past, there's a drunken father and a belt and the word loser said over and over again, because you don't get the drive and the desire to lie about how great you are. It, to the extent that Donald Trump has without having some sort of hideous background that you're trying to get past, you know? Yes. Yeah. But what could it be? Like, like, uh, like we keep the, we keep the bully in the playground part. That's a very good part. That's uh, I, I am picturing him in very short pants with uh, yeah. suspenders, <laughs> maybe a bow tie. Possibly. But Donald Trump's current head just based yeah. it on that image. But what could he do that sets his father off? Because that's a really good scene, too. Um, yeah. No, no. here it is right here. Like, uh, they, they, they are a well-to-do family, and they have a lot of money. And then very young Donald Trump sees some poor people and says, here, you can have some of my money. And then the dad, like... Oh you doing you son of a bitch and starts whipping him with a belt and it's just you can't help people that's for losers you're a winner donald trump you're a winner only losers help poor people unfortunate and then that's just that just burned in his goddamn brain and that's 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 how he got his goddamn drive right there for the part of donald trump's father i would like to cast the guy from monopoly Oh yeah, no, that would be perfect. That would be perfect. Yeah, that would the be... big mustache, the top hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, congratulations, Mr. Trump. I really am impressed. I honestly and sincerely did not think that it was possible that someone could have an unfavorability rating lower than George W. Bush. Post Katrina. But apparently I was wrong because his approval rating, Donald Trump's approval rating going into the inauguration, which is a time that it, that that rating is usually extremely high. Donald Trump's is so low that that basically puts him up there with such well-loved dignitaries as Bill Cosby and Jared Fogle. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when an incoming mm-hmm. president who lost by millions of votes and is as well-liked as a drunken Mel Gibson comes into office – 
Well, then, Mr. Bunny, I think that he needs all of the help that he can get. And who does he have to help him? Mike Pence and the mystery team. <laughs> Mike Pence, a.k.a. Davey, has never been the same since we had to put Goliath down. No. And the worst, most twisted group soulless billionaires and militant right-wing Christians that have ever been assembled, and soon they'll have our nation looking like Mad Max beyond Jesus Dome. Where beyond Jesus. Illegal masturbation will be illegal. Being gay will be illegal. Eating meat on Fridays will be illegal. And God help you if you want to buy a mixed blended shirt on the Sabbath, motherfucker. And it's all Donald Janice's Trump's fucking fault. That <laughs> bastard. Here in Oklahoma, where I uh, live currently, unfortunately. Earthquake capital of the world. Yes, but it's so fucking cheap. Yes, there are (laughs) numerous earthquakes. (laughs) And at any second, I could get lynched. But Jesus fucking Christ. Basically, I'm like rent each month is like a fart and a piece of string. Is basically. And like my, my best pig is basically what I'm paying every month for rent. And so it's just, it's <laughs> like, I hate it, but it's so cheap that it just almost makes up for it. Apparently, you, you know, it, rent is so cheap and, and uh, God, the roads are shit though. Like it, there's no good way to describe to you how horrible the fucking roads are. Just think of the worst and then it's 10 times worse than that. Just every road. See, now, it's, you, you kind of got me with cheap, and you say cheap, and I start thinking, eh, maybe we can afford to move down to Oklahoma or something like that. But, like, I could not imagine living, like, if I was living in Oklahoma, I, I would feel like I would be in the Donald Sutherland version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers all the fucking time. I would be, I, I would be afraid to go out to the movies for fear of people just pointing and going, <sighs> Yeah, the the thing that I'm still trying to get used to is I remember being in California and going to a Walmart and it it it, it looking like a like a war zone from CNN in the '90s during Operation Desert Storm, you know? Yeah. And people are just running around carrying things, and things are spilling, and there's a baby and just a diaper crying and covered in mud, and just. Like like I'm walking around the Walmart looking for an American embassy, and and it, it and just and and the thing that, that that Natasha and I would do is is we would park at the at the Walmart in, in Sacramento, and we'd try to see if we can get from our car in the parking lot to the doors of the Walmart without trying to be sold something. <laughs> It was almost impossible. There was always some guy selling bootleg CDs yeah. or expensive perfume on the cheap. Hey, my idiot boss overstocked the van, and I've got a brand new stereo. Let's screw him over and get you a new stereo. And it, it was always something. And I would just look at these. I would just look at at these people, and I would go, "Hey, I'm so much better than those people. Look at me." I am so much better. And I feel horrible looking at people that way in California because now I go to a Walmart in Oklahoma and that's how everyone's looking at me because I'm the only minority. Yeah. And now people are looking at me and look at that minority there. I've never seen one of those before. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take his picture. Yeah, it's it's it's. It's it's a different world. But I'll tell you, though, I hear Tulsa's great. Apparently, Tulsa is Oklahoma's Austin. Yeah. And I hear that it's good. Whenever I, there's a good but, concert uh, coming, I go, wait a second. It's in fucking Tulsa, isn't it? It was the same thing with Sacramento. And the newspaper would say, like, Primus is coming to town. And I would go, really? And they'd go, yes, in San Francisco. Ah, shit. We're not San Francisco. <laughs> Sacramento's not San Francisco, you fucks. Yeah. It. But at so, the yeah. same time, I can understand, like, I can understand why they may look at you like that. Okay. I'm basically like a Mexican Sasquatch here. That's why they're looking at me like that. They've never seen a Mexican 
but a Mexican with long hair with a suit and tie who looks smart. Like I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't compute to them. They're going, wait a second, he's Mexican, but he looks amazing and smart and talented, and then just their brain just does not compute, and there's smoke coming out of their ears. Yeah, yeah, you know, but but I can understand because at our local Walmart, I'm not sure if she's still there. At our local Walmart, we ha- have this girl who was born with some kind of deformity that makes half of her face look like it's fucking melted. Duh. Okay? Like, like literally. Okay? And I- I- I'm sorry. Just to cut through the bullshit, she looks like a freak. Yeah. Okay? I'm sorry, but to try to dance around that would take forever and i do apologize for saying it you know but but yep. but it's like I, I i can't look at you i i really want to i really want to just hang out in an aisle and 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 watch you for like five minutes you know because yeah. the little bit i've seen of your face is fucking fascinating you know yeah but how you can't do that <laughs> yeah. you can't stand in the aisle of walmart and stare at the freak that's yeah. horrible yeah there that's was a, a that's guy. a that would be a total trump move there was a guy and he was an old guy and he used to occasionally come to my uh bookstore in in sacramento and i saw him every once in a while and uh it was oh he was an old guy and he had kind of a hunchback, but then he had some sort of deformity where his neck was basically coming out of the middle of his chest. Yeah. Just just so just imagine like a hunchback like Igor from Frankenstein, except his neck is coming out of his chest. So his head is like ridiculously lower than it should be. Ooh, okay. And it's like, and so he's like, every time that I saw him, I could not scream a little. Yeah. And I felt bad. Like, like I'm just walking and then suddenly the guy's in front of you and, and you just couldn't just go. Ah. No, I, I, I felt more Stop. like, I felt more like, like, I want to talk to you. You know, shit. Yeah. You know, I, you know every idiot thing I'm going to fucking say right now, don't you? <laughs> you know? Like, something like yeah. that. You know? Like, I really wanted to talk to her and get her story, and I even had notions of maybe a documentary or something. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But but it, it's got to be, like, some kind of nerve damage or something like that. Now, keep in mind, I only I only got like furtive looks <laughs> you know because yeah. you, you don't want to look right at her because you don't want to make her feel uncomfortable or anything like that but it was kind of like like half of her face was fairly pretty I'm kind of thinking like a 90s Joan Cusack kind of a thing yeah you know okay. like no raving beauty you know but like mm, kind of attractive you know something like that and then the rest of the face it like it, like it must have been nerve damage it just like hung down a- as if it had been melted yeah uh so pause. when you walk into a walmart in oklahoma that's what they're seeing yeah yeah uh what was that yell for for me uh, you don't know? I okay. It. I think I got it. Uh, pause it for a second because I just got yelled at. Okay. So, from all of us here at the Pope on Film, we just want to say good luck, Mr. Trump, and rot in fucking hell. Have fun with the next year of your presidency until we impeach your wrinkly orange ass. Yeah. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? But but it's not over. The most important part of this rant, this angry rant, is yet to come. Bunny, 
my friend and confidant and partner in crime, will you please be a treasure and cut this part out of the episode? Yes. And I don't mean remove it because this is a great opening to our podcast. I mean just get this opening and uh, just, just tighten it up a little bit, turn it into an MP3, put it on the iTunes page, put it on SoundCloud, put it on our YouTube page, put it on uh, Facebook, put it on Twitter, especially Twitter, because I want this uh, special thank you <laughs> to President Trump to be sent directly to his wrinkly orange loser ass. Yes. Because I want him to know, and I want there to be a record, that we here at the Pope on Film are standing our fucking ground. Yes. Goddamn right. That is fucking important. That we are here saying, you know what? Fucking no. This has been a special announcement for the Pope on Film. An open message to the 45th President of the United States. Mr. Donald J. Trump.